Tonight, episode 70. Go, go, gadget board games. Welcome to Dice Tower Tonight, a video cast about board games and card games, and especially the people who play them. On tonight's show, I'll get you, gadget! We're talking about cool gadgets in board gaming, those unique devices that make for awesome table presents. Plus, I'm going to try something new with Crystal and the chat. We discuss some games we've played lately, and we answer questions from the audience live. I'm Eric Summerer, and joining me now, the penny to my brain, Crystal Pisano. So, no one would ever believe us, but we the, the Inspector Gadget thing was not discussed or planned i know i independently came up with the name of the episode and you came up with the other references yeah yeah i, I mean, mean i <laughs> admittedly when you hear the word gadget what sure. else do you think what, of it's not what like more? it's low-hanging fruit but <laughs> what more would you do but yes that was that's just how we're simpatico uh crystal that's that's where we're we're siblings basically so i wanted to say your name came up Last week, um, when I was right here on this very channel, I got to host one of the daily chats that the Dice Tower has been doing over the past several weeks. I was talking with Rich Summer, uh, and in order to research this, I went back and listened to one of his podcast episodes, Cardboard, uh, the last time I was on his show, like three years ago. I and, definitely listened to, or I watched live some of that stream, for the okay. record, but I did not get to catch the whole hour. <laughs> so, uh, in, in, you know, reading or listening to that uh, that episode, not only were we talking about, like, escape room games that hadn't yet come out yet, but I happened to stumble upon the, the subject of other podcasts came up. And I got very excited about this new podcast I had just found called Board Game Blitz. And I was talking about the so there's these three ladies and they all have different tastes in their games and and it's just so much fun to listen to and they're really fast and quick and I I'm really enjoy I, I'd like blitz through all the episodes I think you had done maybe 27 or something at that point uh, because you were almost a year old that ma that would make sense because you just celebrated your fourth year in the last couple of weeks since we last spoke so yep. first congratulations and I've always been a fan at least three years ago. Uh, thank you so much. Our four-year anniversary, is, like, uh, the number isn't, like, just any anniversary for us is a big deal. Um, when we started the podcast, Amby and Cassidy and I didn't know each other at all. We had never met in person. Yep. And um, just the fact that Amby and I now have been doing it together for four years uh, is fun. And if anyone hasn't seen the music video that we released uh, in celebration of our anniversary, head over to the Board Game Blitz channel after the tonight's show. Uh, if you like musicals, particularly rent uh i think you will really enjoy the music video that ambi and i recorded with no with no assistance in quarantine um we had a blast doing it it was a lot of fun and rich is one of my favorite board gamers that i've never met in person he was scheduled to appear at the bgg con that i did go to um in 2018 and then last minute had a conflict and didn't end uh, up going but i yeah. i actually called into cardboard once yep. and was literally shook that Rich knew who I was. <laughs> I was like, no, no, you're legit famous. And he was like, oh, Crystal, like board game blitz, Crystal. And I was like, no, how? Uh, so I was a little bit starstruck when I got to speak with him. He is an incredible guy. Wonderful, nice, nice dude. And uh, he, he said that he would be willing to show up in another chat next time I'm hosting you know, or certainly in the future. So that that that's cool. It was great to catch up with him as well. That's awesome. Are you going to be hosting any more of the daily chats in the near future? Uh, I, I think it's very likely. I don't know of any yet. I'm not on the schedule yet, but uh, I think I think Tom would like to get me into the rotation more often. Uh, we'll be recording an episode of the Dice Tower tomorrow, so I'm sure that that will be one of the subjects that we bring up. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, it's been another couple weeks since uh, we got to talk, Crystal, and I, I hope you're doing well. And, uh, I, you know, I, um, we, we were just discussing before the show started how um, we've had to uh, find new and interesting ways to, to play games. And, in fact, I'm going to do something new and interesting today with you and the chat, something that we haven't done before that's going to require some volunteers. Okay. And so I, I want to actually get this started in the chat 
first. Uh, Crystal, you've offered to collect some names. You've got some sort of randomizer that we're going to use in a few minutes. But folks in the chat, if you are watching live and you would like to be one of our, say, four participants, uh, along with Crystal, for our game a little bit later in the show, um, just maybe post raise hand uh, in the chat and Crystal will start collecting your names. Um and, and do that while I'm talking about... Shall I talk about a game I've been playing recently, Crystal? Oh, no. Crystal's pausing a little bit. You still there? Oh, no. Oh, you're there. Everything is being frozen by yes. me doing a web page. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's perfect. You know, just opening a browser tab, everything goes sideways. So, yes, you talk, Eric, and okay. I'm going to hope that things go okay on my end. Excellent. Uh, all right, and, and I love how people are volunteering, and they have no idea what they're going to be in for. It's it's pretty cool. So, I'm talking about an app version of a board game that I really enjoy. This uh, The beta version of this just came out today. Uh, this is, uh, again, the beta version, so the, the company is is testing it. Uh, in fact, the, the developer is called Temple Gates. Uh, is the is the developer of the Roll for the Galaxy app? It looks like this. Hello, Roll for the Galaxy. Um, Roll for the Galaxy is uh, it's a spinoff from Race for the Galaxy. It uh, uses dice uh, to to work through those phases that that you may be familiar with from Race, um, where you're develop or yeah, developing and settling and. Uh, putting uh, you know, production goods on your, your worlds and then shipping them for points or money. Um, it's a cool system, and I really, really enjoy the, uh, the person game. And this, this uh, implementation so far is pretty slick. Uh, it's, again, in beta, so there's a couple of hiccups. I've had it lock up on me a couple of times, but that's what this is about, is getting some feedback. Um, what, I, what I like, so, oh boy. Crystal is is frozen, so I'm going to keep talking while we're uh, trying to get Crystal back. So the um, when when you uh, in the game have to roll your dice, you got the big roll button, and we'll roll all those, and then it produces all this stuff. Did it actually roll? Maybe that's a roll, please. Come on. Okay, so it, the uh, app has frozen. <laughs> This is the kind of day we're having. Um, what I like about it, I can't actually show you now because the app is frozen, um, is that it has a auto-assign feature. Uh, so you get the values on the dice that, that you would normally need to you know, individually move around into the phases that you want to assign them to, but you can just hit a button and it just attaches all the matching symbols where they're supposed to go. Uh, and then you can move them around and adjust them and do powers and stuff. And as you work your way through the phases, it will also uh, allow you to do some auto-assigning. So it sort of speed things up a little bit. Uh, I've only played against the AI uh, as a single player against one other player. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to playing, trying out the uh, multiplayer modes as well. Again, brand new. This one uh, just came out. The beta just came out today. If you are interested, I think... I'm not sure, but I believe they're still, uh, they still have some slots for the beta. And there's a thread on BoardGameGeek under Roll for the Galaxy. Uh, if you look for Roll for the Galaxy app beta feedback, um, you can find out how to sign up for that and, and give it a whirl. But that's what I've been playing, Crystal. How about you? Sorry, I had myself muted so my very loud keyboard would not interrupt <laughs> your talking. And then I forgot that I was muted. And uh, earlier when you said the app is frozen, I said, oh, so everything's frozen. But you didn't hear that because I was muted. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, um, I have put a lot of names into this randomizer uh, wheel uh, on this website that I have. Um, if anyone else wants to volunteer, you can, but at this point it'll be difficult for me to add much more in. So far, I will just run through them real quick. I know we're not picking yet, but I have Jerry, Pesky26, Fred Perro, Ajan Malari, Joanne Gill, Nick Holcomb, Joe Don Richardson, Jason Rodney, and William Krotz. If I missed you and you already said raise his hand, I'm so sorry, please say it again. <laughs> and I will try and get everyone in. 
Um, but that being said, um, you're talking about an app, Eric, and I'll admit I didn't hear all of it <laughs> because of all the phrasing. <laughs> I'm sure it was great. Um, I actually want to show off something that's not a game at all. So for those of you who were here during our last episode, um, we were showing off crafty things. And one of the things that I showed off was a wooden dice tower that I got from a local board game cafe that has since closed. And in the episode, I mentioned that I had considered turning it into an art project. Well, I did. <laughs> I did an acrylic pour painting. Yes. I put the pieces of that dice tower onto, a can onto two canvases, poured paint over it, and I have now reassembled the dice tower and I have the canvases as well to show off. Now, the I only painted one side of the pieces. So the, the inside of the dice tower doesn't look great yet. I'm going to have to do some touch-ups on that. But I wanted to show you all how this turned out. So wow. here's one side of the dice tower. And then the sides are also painted. But again, you can kind of see the backs of the meeples are still plain. So I'm going to probably paint those black or something else. There's the other side. Um, it's acrylic paint, so it's and it's kind of glossy because it's a, a ready mix pour paint. Um, but wow. I am really happy with how it turned out. That's it pretty is, cool. Yeah, um, and I don't even use dice towers that much. I probably <laughs> honestly won't use this one functionally much at all, if at yeah. all, ever. Um, but you had mentioned in the episode, like, ooh, is it going to be tough to put it all back together after you pour paint on it? The answer to that question, Eric, is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to take a very sharp knife and basically dig the paint out of the holes. And I am a big klutz, so I'm very proud that I didn't cut myself. Oh, good. <laughs> at all. Um, oh, but I yeah. wanted to show you all the two canvases as well. So I paint, poured the paint onto the meeples while they were sitting on the canvases. Then I poured additional paint onto the canvases after the fact. Um, so I have two different canvases here oh, neat. that I did. Um, yeah. And I think they turned out pretty cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very um, happy with how they turned out. I think these will be a neat little pair of, they're not obviously like matched up exactly. They were sitting next to each other um, when I was pouring the paint, but then once you pick them up and start tilting them around, right. um, you know, they don't match up quite as well anymore. But yeah, I think, I really like how they turned out. I like the colors I picked for this. And um, I've, ha I hadn't done an acrylic pour painting in a while. And now I want to do more again. So <laughs> I, I'm seeing a, a future uh, business opportunity with, um, you know, decor for your game room and a matching dice tower. I mean, honestly, like, it kind of yeah. works, right? And, <laughs> and then if you can just get an outfit to match, you'd be all set, ready for game night. I'll just, you know, uh, lay myself down on the ground and pour <laughs> some paint. And that will work out great, I'm sure. Not at all. Uh, but I did also want to mention one other tiny thing, since this is a board game show. Okay, so technically what I'm going to talk about isn't a board game. But you all know I was, I've was i been obsessed with Animal Crossing on my Switch. I'm not talking about that. I'm going to talk about the game that has pulled me away from Animal Crossing for at least small amounts of time. Okay. Uh, it, it was. It had released on PC prior to now, but it just came to the Switch recently. It is a game called What the Golf. <laughs> I saw clips of this you posted. I am in love with this game. It's silly and irreverent. It is kind of a golf game, kind of a puzzle-solving game. Definitely a pun-filled, humorous game. Um, <laughs> it honestly gives me similar feelings to what Untitled Goose Game did in that, like, it's light puzzle solving okay. with a little bit of... Uh, it doesn't have quite as much story as Goose Game does, but it's really, really neat, and I am loving it. So I just wanted to throw it out there. If p other people were looking for a break <laughs> from Animal Crossing <laughs> or just a fun game to pick up on the Switch, it's um, it's just launched, and it's 25% off right now, so it's $15 in the U.S. Uh, Nintendo eShop um, as opposed to the MSRP of $20. Um, so it's not super uh, expensive, and I'm really enjoying it. So there, I talked about a game, too. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to go back in the chat real quick okay. and see if anyone else... I didn't see too many other volunteers uh, since okay. you asked the second time. So I think we could probably... And I think we should draw four names. So there we'll have 
a total of five people participating. Um, and okay. w- while you're, you, you want to pull those names now? Sure. Uh, yep. yep. So I've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people. Um, and I'm just going to spin the wheel, which you, I wish you all could watch. So, you know, I'm not cheating, but honestly, I, there's, <laughs> that, there are no prizes here and this is That's... going to be a cooperative experience. So it's okay. Um, Ajan Malari is our first person that got how, picked. How do you spell that? Uh, A J A N is the first name, and then you can just do M as in yep. monkey for the. Got okay. it. And then we'll spin it again. Of course, it has to do dramatic animation, so it like takes a little yes. bit. Yes. Uh, Fred P. Fred Perro is our next. Spinning it a third time. Oh, it's spinning a lot. Okay. Extra spin. Uh, Joanne Gill, so Joanne G J O A N N E. We haven't gotten any duplicates yet. And Jason Rodney, so Jason R. All right. So, I guess I should probably say what we're going to do today. I mean, they they probably want to know what they're in for. <laughs> probably. All right. Have you ever heard? of parsley crystal i have heard of parsley did you ever play any of the uh, old text adventures like zork or hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy i um my zork gaming um i will admit was more the later zork games which weren't the true text-based adventures but i did go back and play the true text adventures uh but for the record people zork grand inquisitor which was the last major title release in the Zork line was hilarious. And Eric Avari as the Grand Inquisitor in that video game is hilarious. And y'all should find that game on like GOG or something and play it. (laughs) (laughs) So Parsley is a, uh, it is a game that is based on those old text adventures. Uh, This is the most recent, or I guess this is the only hardbound collection of these adventures. Uh, Jared Sorensen is the designer of most of them. And uh, he's released... The reason that I this was on my mind is that the latest one just came out. Action Castle 4 just came out as a PDF download, and I played it with my kids and um, really have, in, have enjoyed this. And so I thought we could try and play a Parsley adventure with the chat. Now, the way this works is that I will be playing the game, the parser, the the text interface of this adventure, which is, by the way, called Flaming Goat. (laughs) Um, I I picked one that that is fairly simple, just because I have no idea how well this is going to work. Uh, But we're going to try it, because that's the kind of show we're having. Uh, So I am the text parser. And each of you players will be taking a turn giving me commands. Um, So Krista will go first, and then Ajan, then Fred, then Joanne, then Jason. Uh, Everybody else can certainly chat, and when it's not your turn, you can talk and give uh, suggestions about what you should be doing. Um, But I will only be listening to whoever's turn it is, and when they give me a command, uh, that is what I will attempt to do. Um, for those of you who are in the chat and giving the commands, uh, please try and uh, post in all caps so it's easier for me to see what you're saying. Um, everybody else, feel free to chat amongst yourselves, uh, and I will I will try my best to keep all of these plates spinning. Are you ready, team? I'm I'm ready and I'm excited. <laughs> okay, welcome to Flaming Goat Subway Platform. You exit the train and find yourself standing all alone on a subway platform. A vending machine is here. There is an up escalator here. Crystal? Check vending machine. The battered and abused machine appears to be without power. Ajan. And there will be a delay, of course, for the chat participants, but... I think that that's fine. So this is where you can feel free to... uh, Discuss strategy. No caps for the audience. Yes, it's probably a good idea. <laughs> I like 
Kabuki Kid, our most loyal moderator, is just she's like, I'm I'm coming in. <laughs> The last thing I got from Ajan was not a command. <laughs> we got to Okay, so yeah, if you're if you're not Ajan, <laughs> don't type in all caps. Okay, he says command check elevator. Check elevator. There is no elevator. Fred. There's lots of suggestions here. Yeah. This is probably going to be better with live people. <laughs> you know, I did, I don't remember which game it was that I did. Oh, the um, uh, Weakest Link game. The delay really made that one tough too. But I think it's, it's worth trying these things because it makes for an interesting experience. And I love when the chat gets to participate in a really like substantial way. Just because I want to try it, if I hit this... Nope, that didn't do it. After, uh, okay, so Fred says hit vending machine. A can of soda drops out of the machine. Now we have Joanne. Once everyone has had one turn. Oh, no, that wouldn't work because of me, though. I was going to say we could have ever, all of all four participants make a suggestion all kind of at the same time. And whoever, who, but I guess with delays and stuff, it would be potentially unfair. So, and I don't want to be, I know I would beat everybody theoretically. So I don't want to do that. Oh, and Joanne says you can call her Joe. I did see like. that. I won't count okay. that as the command. <laughs> all these suggestions shake the can swallow the can shake the vending machine and then gator dave says italian stuffed peppers <laughs> what <laughs> is there a joke i'm missing <laughs> i feel okay joanne pick, pick up, up can. can you have the can jason Lots of great ideas, but they're not the ones that are that who whose turn it is. I mean, honestly, this uh, the story that's being created by the alternative suggestions is almost <laughs> as good. So, have I seen Jason? Oh, Gator Dave asked what people had for dinner tonight. That's why somebody said Italian stuffed pepper. Jason says, open can. You pop the top of the can. It lets out a pleasant tss... crystal. Drink from can. You're not thirsty. Also, it's warm. Hey, Jan. We could also, Kabuki is suggesting that maybe you could be the player and they can give suggestions. I mean, if, I think it would make things move along more quickly. <laughs> we, we could move to that. We'll, was, give, we'll give the individuals. Individuals one more round and then we'll switch to all yeah. crystal. How's that? Yeah, I okay. think that's good. Because I want, I want them to direct the story a little bit. Sure. So we'll go with one more round with Ajan is next. Uh, that was a tss, was the clarification. <laughs> Command, leave vending machine. I don't know how to leave vending machine. Fred. I, I get the feeling some people in the chat are more familiar with parsley than I am. <laughs> some people are trying to quit with log out. 
As long as I don't need a torch to scare away grooves, then we're fine. Yes, exactly. Do you know the, the, the song? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Fred put in his command. Fred says, examine can. A warm, opened can of soda. It's dusted with an acceptable amount of rat and insect droppings. Ew. Joe. No fair looking up hints. No, no, no. I pulled up a link to a song by MC Frontalot called It Is Pitch Dark. And it's a song about Zork. And I will share that link in the chat later because I don't want people to click away in YouTube yeah, exactly. right now. This was posted on YouTube in 2007 and it has a little over a million views. Yep, it is Joe's turn to command. Joe's still chatting last I checked. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're still discussing the droppings. Yeah, I think, I, I think after this round, we will move to crystal only and suggestions from the team. Command, turn around. You are pleasantly dizzy. <laughs> Jason, with the last last command from the chat. Oh. <laughs> Nick, don't no. <laughs> Yeah, lots of wonderful suggestions from the chat. I'm glad you're not playing. Nick. Ugh. <laughs> Jason said, pour out drink. That seems ill-advised. What if you need it? All right, Crystal, All right. you're in full control now. Okay. Um, search behind vending machine. There's nothing there. Look under a vending machine? There's nothing there. Check inventory. You have a can. <laughs> Go to escalator. The escalator is broken. Now it is just stairs. Walk upstairs. Or downstairs. I guess I don't know which direction they're going. Which would you like? Oh, there's both. Uh, walk upstairs, because there's grooves downstairs, from what I know in most of these games. Walking upstairs. Broken escalator. You are standing midway up a broken escalator. A flaming goat blocks your path. Poor can on flaming goat. The flames are extinguished. The soda can is now empty. Talk to goat? You don't speak goat. <laughs> Push past goat? The goat does not move. Go back down stairs. Go back down stairs. The escalator remains not working. Uh, search escalator. I'll just leave it at that, I guess. I don't examine escalator. The escalator is broken. Now it is just stairs. Okay. Go down, escalator. You step onto the step and are surprised to find that you go nowhere. Wait, what? <laughs> like, 
like I expect it to walk downstairs. Subway platform. Uh. You find yourself standing all alone on a subway platform. A vending machine is here. There is an up escalator here. Oh, it's an up escalator. Okay, okay, okay. So I've got an ex- Okay, um, <laughs> Skater Dave said, play Tussy Mussy with goat. I like that idea. Um... Oh, I like that idea. Okay, go upstairs. You step onto the bottom step and are surprised to find that you go nowhere. Wait, what? I can't go back up? Throw can at goat. You can't reach it from here. But why can't I go back up? <laughs> I've ruined everything already. Oh, this is, you know what? This is how Zork games go for me, too. It's like, I, may, I progress, like, a few steps and then hit a wall and then just get frustrated and leave my computer. Um, okay. Uh, look around? There's probably nothing new. You find yourself standing all alone on a subway platform. A vending machine is here. There is an up escalator here. Word, oh, I have to say walk, walk upstairs. Broken escalator. Go. You are standing midway up a broken escalator. A goat blocks your path. Give can to goat. The goat bites the can and wanders off with it, chewing noisily. Walk upstairs. You are standing at the top of a broken escalator. You may now resume your daily commute. What was up with that goat, huh? The end. Calculating score. <laughs> oh god, no! You score 10,000 points! Ding, 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 ding! Ah! And, and that's it. So, <laughs> it's all about being, like, really specific with the language and getting the exact combination of terms that you're supposed to get. Um, most of them are longer than that. They require picking up items and combining them and giving them to people. Um, but it's designed to be played if we had maybe three or four live participants without the delay. We could go through and, and you get the... the um, confusion of somebody not realizing it's their turn and then saying something and, you know, that's not a command and the parser gets mad at them and... Uh, okay, so that's delightful. How do I get a copy of that? Uh, so the publisher is MomentoMori.com. It's uh, M-E-M-E-N-T-O hyphen M-O-R-I dot com. They sell okay. all their stuff as PDFs, and they also did a Kickstarter for this uh, hardcover edition recently. But um, when I got the hardcover with the Kickstarter, I also got a PDF copy of the whole book, which is pretty cool. I honestly think that this would be a really fun thing to do, like, over Zoom or Skype or whatever. Like, it, it would be. Yeah. It's, and it's a fun one to do at conventions as well. That's a, uh, that's a good time. Nick is upset that I didn't have a spoiler alert. I'm, I'm sorry. I, that's why I, mean, I, I picked a very small one. I'm hoping that you weren't, that the Flaming Goat Adventure was not... <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot more I'm, in there. There's, oh yeah, somebody said that's a thick book for a very short adventure. There were, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different adventures in here, and there's nice. there's more that are PDFs now. Is it easy to be the parser? It's. It's more difficult than it seems at first. You sort of need to... I mean, that one was very simple. Um, right. But it's good for you to know... You have to read the whole thing first so that you know where they have to go because it's rare that people will give the exact command uh, that they're looking for. And sometimes you have to be a little lenient just to keep things moving. If you get okay. a little too um, uh, strict in the way things... I mean, you can be very strict because these parser games always were. Um but sometimes Get it's good just to, yes, exactly. <laughs> Throw baby. Yes. That's, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it takes, 
my kids try and do it. They're, they're like, ooh, it's my turn. I want to be the parser. And they they don't read. They, don't, they aren't familiar with the entire scene. And so I'll give a command knowing that it's the right thing. And they're like, nope, can't do that. Are you sure? And they haven't turned the page or, you know, you, you have to be familiar with the adventure a little bit. Okay. That's neat, though. Yeah. I really liked it. So that was a bare bones sort of game. Uh, our subject tonight is that we wanted to talk about some games that actually have some table presence, that have some gizmos and and accoutrement that that make it distinctive. You know, some unique piece of hardware that makes the game what it is. We're and we're calling it gadgets, just for lack of a better term. Cr yeah. Crystal, I think you may have more visual aids than I do. I, I went through some of my ideas, and I don't actually own any of these games. I, well, I, I first I wanted to say that I think gadgety, like, I mean, what, what defines a gadget in a game? Yeah. I was looking at my collection, and I, you know, some things popped out at me at first that I then, like, to me, Fireball Island probably counts here. It's a big... 3D shaped island with, you know, Volcar on top that you rotate, but is that really a gadget? It it could, you know, just the, the landscaping itself, is that a gadget? I wasn't sure. I didn't bring Fireball Island here, especially because most of you know what that is yep. too. Um, but I personally have always been drawn to games that have some kind of electronic component or something unique about them that you don't find in other games. And this goes all the way back to my childhood. The types of board games that stick out in my memory the most, and these aren't necessarily the ones I played all the time, but things like Don't Wake Daddy or Crocodile Dentist, or even the like the generic fishing game, the one with the little fish that pop out oh, the of the magnet. Holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you just have a little like fishing pole and all you have to do is catch them and pull them out. Like that's obviously for really small kids, but I remember those types of things fondly or perfection. Do you remember perfection? Yeah. Oh yeah. Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the like, noise oh, it made. Practice and <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. Um <laughs> Those types of things, I think, for me, are more memorable than some other more simple games. And I, even as an adult, I have found I still gravitate toward those types of games. And I pulled five out of my collection that I think are good examples. And I'm going to see if I can... Well, we're not going to be able to pull them off of this part of my desk very easily, but I'm going to move them over a little <laughs> bit so you can at least see, see them. See the stack here. Yep. Yeah, so um, on top, uh, I actually demoed this in an episode of Dice Tower Tonight last year. Yeah. This is Flying Sushi Kitchen. Um, so this one, is it upside down? No, it's right. No, no. Um, Flying Sushi Kitchen is the one where you've got little foam, uh, styrofoam balls floating above bamboo stalks that yep, you have yep. to grab with chopsticks. It's silly. It's ridiculous. Um, I brought it to Dice Tower West and set it up on one of the tables right near the front of the room and had a lot of people coming by and being like, well, what the <laughs> heck is that? <laughs> I want um, next. Yes. So putting that down. Next up, we have Battle Dome, which I just bought last year off of eBay. That's like the Battle pinball Dome, game, right? Yeah, this is the one that's basically four-player pinball. <laughs> And the box is huge. Can you tell? Oh, yeah. Like, uh -huh. It's ginormous. Um, it is so much fun. It has the same type of mechanism that Scattergories does, where you wind up a thing and then click a button and it winds down. And that's what dispenses the balls at the top of this. So no oh, batteries wow. required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, that's a plus. I mean, because batteries in games can get, you know, tough sometimes, especially if you leave them in there too long. I think most of you know my love of the Omega virus. This is the copy I got for my birthday oh. in 1992, wow. I believe. Um, it still works perfectly. I still play it semi-regularly. I still hope Restoration Games brings it back <laughs> at some point. I Even though I still have mine. I have never played the Omega virus. I really should at some point. You know what? The next time it is safe <laughs> for a convention board game related to happen here in Las Vegas, whether that is the next Dice Tower West or something beyond that, yep. I will most certainly bring it to the con and play it with you because okay. it is a lot of fun. I'm in. Um, 
This one people are probably really familiar with because it's more, it's newer than the rest of them, Drop Mix. Honestly, I think this is something really neat that kind of, the, the price was a little too high when it released. Yeah. And so I think a lot of people passed on it and I'm not judging them for that. I ended up getting this copy cheaper later. It is so much fun. If you it like is. music, Drop Mix is just great. Um, and then last, oh gosh, that's precarious. <laughs> uh, last but certainly not least, um, All Madness, oh. also a gigantic box. Why are all the games, like, how? How did they put these on the shelves in the 90s? Be also, look at how torn up this is. Wow. You see this poor box? I, again, this is my original copy that was at my parents' house. It is in, the box is in tatters, but all the pieces are good, so... I think, you know, most of these gadgets can't be disassembled. You know, you, I guess Mousetrap is pieces that you assemble, but um, most of these have some sort of... That's, that's sort of what makes it cool, is this solid gadget component um, that may have a mechanism inside or electronics inside, so it needs that extra space in the box. What's funny is Mall Madness's electronic component is reasonably small. The thing that sits in the middle of the mall is pretty small. It's not tidy, but it's... Um, and then you've got all of the plastic pieces that go along the sides of the mall, and there's a lot of those. So those take up real estate. But honestly, the reason this box is particularly big is the game board. Because, oh and I swear I'm not going to pull a Honga right now. Don't. Don't do it. I'm not. I swear. This, I, um, like, hold on. Can you? That's a... Not, like, look how big this is. <laughs> that's a big board. This, and, is, this takes up the entire... It folded in half, it's the entire box lid Wow. Size. They, they, so, had, they hadn't invented quad folds yet. Yeah. But I think, for me, these games... Like, I'm when I play board games, I'm often looking for something unique, which is kind of why, in the past, I've talked about not liking a lot of Euro-style games, because even if the mechanisms are really solid and great... Those games don't often create something unique and memorable for me personally. And I, you know that I've shifted. I really, there are some Euro games I really enjoy now. But games like these create experiences that I remember much longer. I, I played Castles of Burgundy for the first time last year. I'd never played it before and really enjoyed it. But right now, if you ask me how to play Castles of Burgundy... I wouldn't remember. <laughs> Having only played it once and having it been, be, I, it was taught to me, I didn't read the rules, I would need a pretty strong refresher to play it again this year because I only played it once. Mall Madness, I don't really need the rule book to explain to you how to play this game. It's just seared into your brain. In fact, the rule book is not in there, so I have <laughs> to remember. <laughs> So I, I don't have the pretty boxes to show, but I, I uh, in the chat also, they mentioned the Gizmos Hopper uh, and, oh, or the yeah. Potion Explosion Hopper, very similar. Uh, cardboard components, but it, it is really the game, this uh, sort of mechanism for randomizing marbles. Um, Mousetrap, we talked about Merchants of Amsterdam. Have you played that one, Crystal? Merchants of Amsterdam? Okay. It's, it is an auction game that uses a Dutch auction. You know, where you start okay. at a high value and it goes down gradually. And the way it does this is with a a plastic, like, timer buzzer thing. Sort of like the uh, your, your pinball game there. You okay. wind it up and start it going and you set the, the needle at, like, 110. And it just gradually ticks down. And as soon as somebody decides, I'm going to pay that amount, they hit this big buzzer. And it stops the timer, and they win the auction at that amount that they uh, they bid. The problem is that the uh, it was very fragile, and so people would get excited. It looks like a game show buzzer, and so you'd you'd be go you'd be playing, and people are like, "I want that!" Slam it, and it would break the oh. the timer. Um, so when I did the only time I played the game, we were instructed very clearly: do not hit it. You just in fact, in fact, we had to we had to say I got it, and then gently. <laughs> it's mine. Gently push the button because he didn't want us to destroy his game. Um, the Dark Tower. Uh, a few people in the in the chat mentioned that, and both the original and the new one are gadget games for sure. 
Um, I'm so excited about the new one, Eric. I cannot tell you. Yes. Uh, the the Quizard. I think I've mentioned that on this show. The um, It wasn't Pressure Luck. It was Sale of the Century. The Sale of the Century home game had the Quizard, um, which is basically a game show buzzer. Uh, where we had, I think, six different little... It was like a central unit and then uh, buzzers that stretched out with long cords. And it you hit the button and it would tell you who buzzed in first. Simple as that. But it allowed you to do the game show part of it because you could tell who buzzed in first. And it was pretty cool. And last but not least was a game that I thought was called Payday. It's not. I had these memories of playing... Uh, this game with my cousin, I never owned it myself, but it had this clock tower, uh, or a bank, a bank clock, plastic clock, that periodically, each turn of the game, you'd push a button and it would advance the time. And the game ended when the clock hit five o'clock. But you didn't know whether one push was going to move it forward 10 minutes or 20 minutes. And it periodically had things that would pop out that would trigger other events and you had to run around town and help old little old ladies across the street and and uh, do different tasks around town to earn money uh we found out later it was called fun city i had to post on the flip the table board on facebook and say what is this game it's not payday i've been wrong and i couldn't find i kept like googling tower clock board game piece that didn't do it fun city it's funny I saw your post in that group today, Eric, yeah. and I was like, I bet I know why he's asking. Uh, someone in the chat said that they wish I had a microphone, and I do, so I'm curious if my audio is not great. That's interesting. Because <laughs> I most, oh gosh, picking it up is risky because I don't want to make loud noises, but it's back here. They, well, they just want you to mount I, it on one of these things. I mean... It's 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 a standing mic and it's yeah. right by my computer monitor. So if my audio is bad, um, we can definitely mess with that. So let me know. Yeah, I people mean, in chat. I can hear you fine. I I don't know whether it's just uh, echoey in your room or something like that that we're. I mean, that's possible. Yeah. Um, I don't have all of the soundproofing stuff up right now, yeah. but. Uh, Pod Six is asking, "What's the game where you had to match the little yellow shapes before the tabletop board popped and they all fell out again?" That's the one we mentioned earlier. Perfection. Perfection. Yeah, I feel like that one had a catchy tune as part of the commercial, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a there's a jingle. All these games had jingles. I mean, oh. yeah, Crossfire. Which they re-released or they kept releasing Crossfire, and I've heard that more like the modern versions of it don't work the same way or aren't as good as the original. <clears throat> I never owned Crossfire though, so I don't know. Hmm. Um, and thank you, chat, for confirming that the audio is okay. I appreciate that. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. I mean, um, any other gizmos, uh, any other um, gadgets that we want to discuss before we take some questions from the from the chat? I mean, nothing necessarily specific, I guess. I think it just, you know, the argument comes up a lot with games with things like this, that those types of elements are added as a gimmick. Um, I've brought this up before, that while I recognize that there are gimmicky elements to things like this, <clears throat> I think they often are more than a gimmick, especially if they do add to the immersive immersiveness of the gameplay. Even in those kids' games. Like, people don't think about kids' games in any kind of academic or serious way. Except if you're me, apparently. Because, like, okay, if you were actually a dentist for a crocodile, like... You, you'd be scared and you'd have the, have the risk of the crocodile biting you. And the tension that comes from knowing that any tooth you pull, the crocodile could bite your hand. Like, that makes that game thematic. And I get it. It's silly. <laughs> but it works. And yep. I think it adds to the fun. It, it does. It definitely brings you in. And, and uh, these are great convention games often, too. Everything but the squawk box games where you can't hear them very well. But, but things that have this unique object that you get to place on the table uh, and people can walk by and go, what in the world is that? I've never seen that before. 
All right. Well, uh, we've got about 10 minutes left before our typical end time. So Eric and I would be happy to answer some questions from you all. And I'm going to attempt to make the audio sound a little bit better while we do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, now I'm just paranoid. No, I, th- I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm hearing just fine. Uh, so a couple of things that I saw go by um, the discussion question of would you consider an app to be a gadget? I, I think, yeah, that that's something that um, that Crystal and I talked about when we were batting this idea around and it seemed more fun to talk about the non-app gadgets um but certainly you know an impressive app can do a lot of the things that these devices will do uh and and yeah board games with apps get discussed more frequently on through other channels yes uh someone someone said that it looked like i had gotten a haircut i i did um my my wife has been cutting the children's hair, and and finally she uh, convinced me to sit down and give it a go. And I think she did a great job. Very That's impressive. awesome. I'm gonna mute myself for a few seconds. Oh, yeah. Crystal's still fooling around. Uh okay. So, what is Omega Virus, and how could Restoration Games redo it in a cool way? I don't know. I mean, I I know what Omega Virus is. Oh, um, okay. I'm coming back. Okay. I'm coming back. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know if that will sound any better. I've propped some insulation, some like soundproofing foam yeah. around I, my microphone. I which... think it cut back a little bit on the reverb. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see if that is a little bit better. Um, chat, please always let me know if there's something I can do to improve the audio. I know that bad audio can be unbearable, so I'm always happy to make adjustments. Um, so the Omega virus is a board game that has a squawk box, like Eric said, which is an electronic component that talks to you and you interact with throughout the course of the game. Um, You can play with between one and four players. Each player is playing independently. It is not a cooperative game, although I tend to play the game semi-cooperatively. You are on a space station that has been invaded by a computer virus that is trying to destroy the station. You have to track down all of the pieces necessary to attack the virus, then find the virus who is hidden in a secret location on the space station and destroy it before time runs out because the game has a running timer. The difficulty is set based on what the timer is. I think, I wanna say the easiest difficulty is 30 minutes, medium is like 25 and hard is 20, something like that, or the hard one might be 15 minutes. and you're just wandering around the space station. The neatest part of this game is how they hide where the virus is. Um, at the beginning of the game, every player has to type a secret code in on the box in the middle of the game. Um, so you cover your hand and you type in your secret three digit code that no other player knows. Every room you visit on the space station, no matter where it is or what it is, every single room at the end of your interaction there on your turn, it will give you three digits every time. If you ever hear your specific three digit code on your turn, then you know that's where the virus is hiding. But none of the other players will know that information because they don't know what your code is. So it's really neat because you can find where the virus is at any point during the game. And then you just have to keep that information to yourself until you collect all of the pieces you need. Uh, The pieces snap onto your little player. I wonder... I might be able to get that out. We'll do that here in a sec. (laughs) Okay. Um, And uh, then you collect all the pieces, you snap them all onto your guy, you go back to where the virus is, assuming you've found it, um, and then you have to destroy the virus, which is a little bit of random luck because the virus, uh, there's four buttons on the console, and only one of them will destroy the virus, and there's no way to know which one it is. So you have to sometimes try multiple times, which gives the other players a chance to kind of catch up and come get the virus before you can. Um, But like I said, I play this a little bit semi-cooperatively. I do not ever say where the virus is once I've found it, but I will, like, when time is really about to run out, if somebody else has all of the gear and I don't, like, I want them to go destroy the virus. I don't want all of us to lose. Okay. Uh, so it's yeah. <laughs> William asks, "Are both of you planning on hosting a game during the virtual con?" Now, this is a, an event that the Dice Tower is running. I, there, there's also, you know, there's there's a 
an event with Board Game Geek and the Dice Tower, and then immediately after that is a... Um, we're, we're also going to be doing some events during the period that would have been Dice Tower East. Um, I have not scheduled any uh, games yet, but I, I think I probably will be doing something. Um, I know Tabletop Simulator has Merchant of Venus. That's often something that hits the table during the in-person conventions that I, I get to go to. Um, I, I wouldn't mind running something like Parsley with a live participant panel. Um, I'm up for doing just about anything. I I had the time blocked out, so I will probably be doing something, but those decisions haven't been made yet. I And I have not been asked to do anything specific yet. Um, I'm sure if Tom wants me to help with something, he will probably let me know in the upcoming weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm likely not taking time off from work, or at least not much time off from work, because... Well, if I'm not traveling, you know, it's I don't want to use my vacation days yeah. um, if I don't have to. And honestly, I had run out of vacation days at like during Dice Tower West. Like I was fully out of vacation days. So right now I'm kind of building those back up, which is kind of nice because that will theoretically when things do start happening again, it'll be a little less stressful for me, which is kind of nice. So <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm happy to help with whatever, basically. Yep. Especially if it's in the evenings after I get off work. Like, I'm down to do whatever. Hmm. Uh, could... So, yeah, I pulled one of the little Space Marine guys out of Omega Virus. So, oh, they all wow. have this little black backpack. And these three pieces are the things that you have to go and find and collect. And then once you have all three of them on your backpack, um, then you can go defeat the virus. That seems so... unwieldy. How do you even get through doors when you're walking around like that? Oh, there's no doors. <laughs> the board is just here. Whoop. No, 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 no. The rooms are literally just spaces on a board. So there's no doorways or anything like that. You're just walking around on a flat board. I just feel like they'd get stuck if you try and go through anything. I mean, yeah, probably. Uh, Jason says the Parsley game that we played earlier reminds him of the Choose Your Own Adventure games. Uh, do we prefer the choose your own adventure games over the unlock games? That's a good question. I would say, even though unlock isn't my favorite of the escape room series of games, I think as far as a gaming experience goes, I prefer unlock. Although I haven't played both of the choose your own adventure games, so I don't have a lot of comparison points there. But I think for me personally, choose your own adventure is more fun solo and unlock is more fun with a couple of friends. So there are different experiences for me personally. Yeah. I, the, the choose your own adventure I have enjoyed. I've only played the first one of that as well, even though I own the second, I just haven't gotten it out to the table yet. Um, there's a random element to choose your own adventure with die rolls and stuff, which is okay, but not my favorite. I, I really like to have the pure puzzle in these styles of games. So unlock certainly fits my aesthetic better than uh, choose your own adventure. But I've I've enjoyed the choose your own adventure game. I would just I I've, I've played many many more unlocks and am ravenous for them. Whereas the choose your own adventure is like yeah that's pretty cool. Uh, Kabuki Kid said in the chat that Jeff Engelstein recently said he did an escape room over the internet and said it worked well. I've actually heard that there are some escape room companies, yeah, that are like strapping a GoPro to one of their employees and letting you go through a real escape room over the internet. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. I know there are companies that have designed them to be virtual escape rooms and you'll, you can even get a guide that, that runs you through it. And um, I, one of our local escape room companies participated in sort of a group virtual escape room they banded together with all these new england escape rooms to say hey um don't forget about us <laughs> when when we reopen you could win and, and you could win gift certificates and stuff if you do really well um and so having but having somebody with a gopro in an actual room that is fascinating right it's a really creative solution to you know, and I'm sure that they're giving discounts probably for the experience. But, you know, when you're a business that needs to make some income, that's a really clever way to do it. And 
obviously it's not going to be exactly the same as being in the physical space, but it's yeah close. Yeah. You still get to see all the elements and everything. I will say, though, some of my favorite real escape rooms have been ones where you needed to, like, heavily manipulate physical objects in cool ways. And so not being able to do that myself, I think I would miss out on a little bit of that, like, satisfaction. Yeah. It, it, it would be like remote control person, someone in the in the chats. Like, you know, it, it's that disconnect of you're not, you know, no, further to your left. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, it would be, it would be weird. It'd be like trying to play a Parsley game over chat. Huh? I mean, who would try that? <laughs> uh, Nick asks a question that might be a good one to end on. Um, the best and worst thing about missing conventions this spring and summer, or maybe even the fall. Okay. Um, for me, the worst thing is easy and that's not getting to see friends yeah. because I've made enough friends in the board game industry that I tend to only see at conventions. I'm now not going to get to see those friends for quite some time. And that's a really big bummer. Yeah. The best thing, I mean, I think the obvious one is staying healthy. Like, yes. That's the best thing. Yeah, yeah. But like, aside from the obvious, I think for me, the best thing is kind of just getting a break and saving up those vacation days. And I wasn't burned out on conventions or travel. In fact, I've been continually ramping up the number of conventions that I go to. But I think you know, maybe this will give me the opportunity here in the next year or two to take a real vacation because I'll have some vacation days saved up. I tend to not do a lot of traveling outside of board game stuff now because I do so much board game stuff and I do really like taking actual vacations. <laughs> so. Uh, I I mean, I think I have the same negative that you do, Crystal. It's 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 frustrating to not be able to hang out with our friends and our crew and, and the team and, and, you know, hanging out in a booth and setting it up and taking it down and getting to meet people and having the excitement of a, an a exhibition hall opening and um, all of all of that that comes with it. But also with that comes a good amount of stress as well with traveling and having to take time off work. And um, I feel like I've been able to slow down a little bit and and releases you know if i'm at a convention i'm going to be buying a bunch of new stuff and there are some review copies and new releases and and more stuff to 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 sort of consume and get to the table and read the rules and everything and um and and because it's slowed down just a little bit i feel like i've been able to catch up a little more on some of my backlog play stuff with my kids that i think they would enjoy and we just have a little more time to do that uh which is which is good um, I, I would love it if we could get back to normal sooner, but it is good to get that breath and, and, uh, and sort of reboot a little bit. Yeah, I will say I, I've enjoyed online hangouts with people. I know that that is not for everyone, yeah. um, but I have gotten to do some cool things that I didn't think would be possible. Um, and I'm going to use this to plug one of them that I think some people in chat might be interested in. Uh, this coming Saturday night, um, starting at 6 p.m. So that's actually the same time as the daily chat here on the Dice Tower. So maybe wait until 7 p.m. if you want. Do the daily chat first. Then head over to the Board Game Blitz Twitch channel because Ambie and I are hosting a karaoke night oh, again. Oh, boy. Yeah, I know it's late for you on the East Coast because, yeah, but I, I'm toying with the idea of doing some stuff earlier in the day in the afternoon, um, but I don't know if that'll be karaoke. That might be Marble Races or Board Game Arena or other things okay. like that, but we are definitely doing karaoke starting at 6 p.m. on Saturday night on the Twitch channel. Um, so, And all you have to do is download the program Twitch Sings, which is free, um, and learn how that works. And then you can come and sing karaoke with us live on the internet, which that, like, I never would have thought that was even possible. And it is. And it's really fun. We had a blast the last time we did this, like a month, month and a half ago. Yep. Um, so I'm really, really excited to do karaoke night again. And I hope a bunch of you can come join us for that. That is incredibly tempting. Well, I, I think it's it's once again time to, to wrap things up. Yep, it sure is. I uh, I appreciate you all in the chat so much for being here with us every week. Um, 
every other week, I suppose. Not every week, but I know you all are here every night for the daily chats as well, which is pretty awesome. Um, Eric has hosted one of those and is probably going to be hosting more. There's a chance I might be hosting those in the near future too, but we're working on that. It's hard when I don't own a Mac because the software doesn't work on a PC. Um, But we will be back in two weeks for another Dice Tower tonight um, at 6 p.m. Pacific. 9 p.m. Eastern. Before you leave tonight, please make sure you click the thumbs up button below the video if you did like tonight's stream. Hopefully my audio is okay now. Um, And until then, until next time, uh, I'm Crystal Pisano. I'm Eric Summer. And you've been watching Dice Tower tonight. Thank you for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. Crystal and I will see you in two weeks for another installment. Our show is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Dice Tower Tonight is produced by Crystal and me with assistance from Tom Vassell, Mike Delisio, Roy Kennedy, and Rob Searing. Commands to display firearm in old school text adventure games provided by Shogun. <laughs> Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at Board Game Geek on Facebook or Twitter, or by emailing us at Crystal at DiceTower.com or Eric at DiceTower.com. And don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at DiceTowerNetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, have fun, have fun gaming. Gaming. Bye, everyone. So long, folks.